Chapter 27, Mike TV is sent by television. Mike TV was even more excited than Grandpa Joe at seeing a bar of chocolate being sent by television. But Mr. Wonka, he shouted, can you send other things through the air in the same way? Breakfast cereal, for instance? Oh, my sainted aunt, cried Mr. Wonka. Don't mention that disgusting stuff in front of me. Do you know what breakfast cereal is made of? It's made of all those little curly wooden shavings you find in pencil sharpeners. But could you send it by television if you wanted to, as you do chocolate, asked Mike TV. Of course I could. And what about people, asked Mike TV. Could you send a real live person from one place to another in the same way? A person, cried Mr. Wonka. Are you off your rocker? But could it be done? Good heavens, child, I really don't know. I suppose it could. Yes, I'm pretty sure it could. Of course it could. I wouldn't like to risk it, though. It might have some very nasty results. But Mike TV was already off and running. The moment he heard Mr. Wonka saying, I'm pretty sure it could, of course it could, he turned away and started running as fast as he could toward the other end of the room, where the great camera was standing. Look at me, he shouted as he ran. I'm going to be the first person in the world to be sent by television. No, 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 cried Mr. Wonka. Mike, screamed Mrs. TV, stop, come back. You'll be turned into a million tiny pieces. But there was no stopping Mike TV now. The crazy boy rushed on, and when he reached the enormous camera, he jumped straight for the switch, scattering Oompa Loompas right and left as he went. See you later, alligator, he shouted, and he pulled down the switch, as he, and as he did so, he leapt out into the full glare of the mighty lens. There was a blinding flash, then there was silence. Then Mrs. TV ran forward, but she stopped dead in the middle of the room, and she stood there. She stood staring at the place where her son had been and her great red mouth opened wide and she screamed he's gone he's gone good heavens he has gone shouted mr tv mr wonka hurried forward and placed a hand gently on mrs tv's shoulder we shall have to hope for the best she said we must pray that your little boy will come out unharmed at the other end mike screamed mrs tv clasping her hands where are you i'll tell you where he is said mr tv he's whizzing around above our heads in a million tiny pieces don't talk about it, wailed Mrs. TV. We must watch the television set, said Mr. Wonka. He may come through at any minute. Mr. and Mrs. TV and Grandpa Joe and little Charlie and Mr. Wonka all gathered round the television and stared tensely at the screen. The screen was quite blank. He's taking a heck of a long time to come across, said Mr. TV, wiping his brow. Oh dear, oh dear, said Mr. Wonka. I do hope that no part of him gets left behind. What on earth do you mean, asked Mr. TV sharply. I don't wish to alarm you, said Mr. Wonka, but it does sometimes sometimes happen that only about half the little pieces find their way into the television set. It happened last week. I don't know why, but the result was that only half a bar of chocolate came through. Mrs. TV let out a scream of horror. You mean only half of Mike is coming back to us, she cried. Let's hope it's a top half, said Mr. TV. Hold everything, said Mr. Wonka. Watch the screen. Something's happening. The screen had suddenly began to flicker, and then some wavy lines appeared. Mr. Wonka adjusted one of the knobs, and the wavy lines went away. And now, very slowly, the screen began to get brighter and brighter. Here he comes, yelled Mr. Wonka. That's him, all right. Is he all in one piece, cried Mrs. TV. I'm not sure, said Mr. Wonka. It's too early to tell. Faintly at first, but becoming clearer and clearer every second, the picture of Mike TV appeared on the screen. He was standing up and waving at the audience and grinning from ear to ear. But he's a midget, shouted Mr. TV. Mike, cried Mrs. TV, are you all right? Are there any bits of you missing? Is he going to get any bigger, shouted Mr. TV. Talk to me, Mike, cried Mrs. TV. Say something. Tell me you're all right. A tiny little voice, no louder than the squeaking of a mouse, came out of the television set. Hi, Mom, it said. Hi, Pop, look at me. I'm the first person ever to be sent by television. Grab him, ordered Mr. Wonka, quick. Mrs. TV shot out a hand and picked up the tiny figure of Mike TV out of the screen. Hooray, cried Mr. Wonka. He's all one piece. He's completely unharmed. You call that unharmed, snapped Mrs. TV, peering at the little speck of a boy who was now running to and fro across the palm of her hand, waving his pistols in the air. He was certainly not more than an inch tall. He shrunk, said Mr. TV. Of course he shrunk, said Mr. Wonka. What did you expect? This is terrible, wailed Mrs. TV. What are we going to do? And Mr. TV said, we can't send him back to school like this. He'll get trod upon. He'll get squashed. He won't be able to do anything, cried Mrs. TV. Oh, yes, I will, squeaked the, squeaked the tiny voice of Mike TV. I'll still be able to watch television. 
Never again, shouted Mr. TV. I'm throwing the television set right out the window the moment we get home. I've had enough of this. When he heard this, Mike TV flew into a horrible temper tantrum. He started jumping up and down on the palm of his mother's hand, screaming and yelling and trying to bite her finger. I want to watch television, he squeaked. I want to watch television. I want to watch television. Here, give him to me, said Mr. TV. And he took the tiny boy and shoved him into the pocket of his jacket and stuffed a handkerchief on top. Squeals and yells came from inside the pocket, and the pocket shook as a furious little prisoner fought to get out. Oh, Mr. Wonka, wailed Mrs. TV. How can we make him grow? Well, said Mr. Wonka, stroking his beard and gazing thoughtfully at the ceiling. I must say that's a wee bit tricky. <clears throat> but small boys are extremely springy and elastic. They stretch like mad. So what we'll do, we'll put him in a special machine I have for testing the stretchiness of chewing gum. Maybe that will bring him back to what he was. Oh, thank you, said Mrs. TV. Don't mention it, my dear lady. How far do you think he'll stretch? asked Mrs. TV. Maybe for miles, said Mr. Wonka. Who knows? But he's going to be awfully thin. Everything gets thinner when you stretch it. You mean like chewing gum, asked Mr. TV? Exactly. How thin will he be, asked Mrs. TV anxiously. I have the foggiest idea, said Mr. Wonka, and it doesn't really matter anyway, because we'll soon fatten him up again, and all we'll have to do is give him a triple overdose of my wonderful super vitamin candy. Super vitamin candy contains huge amounts of vitamin A and vitamin B. It also contains vitamin C, vitamin D, vitamin E, vitamin F, vitamin G, vitamin I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, vitamin T, vitamin U, vitamin V, vitamin W, vitamin X, vitamin Y, and, believe it or not, vitamin Z. The only two vitamins it doesn't have in it are vitamin S, because it makes you sick, and vitamin H, because it makes you grow horns out of the top of your head like a bull. But it does have in it a very small amount of the rarest and most magical vitamins of them all, vitamin Wonka. And what will that do to him, asked Mr. TB, TB anxiously. It'll make his toes grow out until they're as long as his fingers. Oh no, cried Mrs. TB. Don't be silly, said Mr. Wonka. It's most useful. He'll be able to play the piano with his feet. But Mr. Wonka, no arguments, please, said Mr. Wonka. He turned away and clicked his fingers three times in the air. An Oompa Loompa appeared immediately and stood beside him. Follow these orders, said Mr. Wonka, handing the Oompa Loompa a piece of paper on which he had written full instructions. And you'll find the boy in his father's pocket. Off you go. Goodbye, Mr. TV. Goodbye, Mrs. TV. And please don't look so worried. They all come out in the wash, you know, every one of them. At the end of the room, the Oompa Loompas around the giant camera were already beating their tiny drums and beginning to jog up and down to the rhythm. There they go again, said Mr. Wonka. I'm afraid you can't stop them singing. Little Charlie caught Grandpa Joe's hand, and the two of them stood beside Mr. Wonka in the middle of the long, bright room, listening to the Oompa Loompas, and this is what they sang. The most important thing we've learned, so far as children are concerned, is never, never, never let them near your television set, or better still, just don't install that thing at all. In almost every house we've been, we've watched them gapping at the screen, they loll and slop and lounge about and stare until their eyes pop out. Last week in someone's place we saw a dozen eyeballs on the floor. They sit and stare and stare and sit until they're hypnotized by it. Until they're absolutely thunk with all the shock and ghastly junk. Oh yes, we know it keeps them still. They don't climb out of the windowsill. They never fight or kick or punch. They leave you free to cook the lunch and wash the dishes in the sink. But did you ever stop to think, to wonder just exactly what? This does to your beloved tot. It rocks the senses in the head. It kills imagination dead. It clogs and clutters up the mind. It makes a child so dull and blind. He can no longer understand a fantasy of fairyland. His brain becomes as soft as cheese. His powers of thinking rust and freeze. He cannot think he only sees. All right, you'll cry. All right, you'll say. But if we take the set away, what shall we do to entertain our darling children? Please explain. We'll answer this by asking you what used the darling ones to do. How used they keep themselves contented before this monster was invented. Have you forgotten? Don't you know? We'll say it that we'll say it very loud and slow. They used to read. They'd read and read and read and read and then proceed to read some more Great Scott Gazooks. One half their lives was reading books. The nursery shelves held books galore, books cluttered up the nursery floor, and in the bedroom by the bed more books were waiting to be read. Such wondrous, fine, fantastic tales of dragons, gypsies, queens, and whales, and treasure isles and distant shores were 
where smugglers rowed with muffled oars, and pirates wearing purple pants, and sailing ships and elephants, and cannibals crouching round the pot, stirring away at something hot. It smells so good, what can it be? What good gracious, it's Penelope. The younger ones had Beatrix Potter, with Mr. Todd the Dirty Rotter, and Squirrel Nutkin, Piglin Bland, and Mrs. Tiggy Winkle Ann, just how the camel got his hump, and how the monkey lost his rump, and Mr. Toad, and bless my soul, there's Mr. Rat and Mr. Mole. Oh, books, what books they used to know, those children living long ago. So please, oh please, we beg, we pray, pray, go throw your TV set away. And in this place you can install a lovely bookshelf on the wall. Then fill the shelves with lots of books, ignoring all the dirty looks, the screams and yells and bites and kicks, and children hitting you with sticks. Fear not, because we promise you that in about a week or two of having nothing else to do, they'll now begin to feel the need of having something good to read. And once they start, oh boy, oh boy, you watch the slowly growing joy that fills their hearts. They'll grow so keen, they'll wonder what they've ever, they'd have ever they ever seen in that ridiculous machine, that nauseating, foul, unclean, repulsive television screen. And later, each and every kid will love you more for what you did. P.S. Regarding my TV, we very much regret that we shall simply have to wait and see if we can get him back his height, but if we can't, that serves him right.